Hello, welcome back to another devlog of The Secret Life of Dorian Pink, a narrative RPG where the devil has kidnapped your boyfriend Basil to cook for a feast of all. Anyway, let's start talking about music today. I have been trying to wrap my head around the logic of implementing adaptive music. For my non-game dev friends, Adaptive music is when the music changes to reflect what's happening in the game. This could mean changing tracks naturally when you enter another room. Or the music getting more and more intense as the player does certain things. As usual, I will have some reference videos in the description below on this topic for those who are interested in learning more. I made a flowchart that's color-coded. This is the snippet of the flowchart. It will give me a better idea of the music that I have to create, what needs to be split into layers and what needs to be played with a different instrument. Here I have modulation, variation, layering, and main theme. Um, so the main theme is a new song or music piece that I have to create from scratch. Modulation is when I change it from major to minor key, or vice versa, to fit the mood or some other keys. Layering is when I need to add or take away elements. For example, like you could have a little beat under the main melody and you could take that away. And finally, variation is playing the same tune in a different instrument. I'm currently playing with this plugin called Godot Mixing Desk, where one of the features is you get to layer on sounds like you layer on your artwork in Photoshop. But there's no way of predicting when the player will do that, of course. So all these layers will have to work musically together. Literally, the whole game process is just layers. I will share more with you guys once I actually know how to do this. I'm pretty confused right now. I also downloaded fmod to play around with, which is the middleware for adaptive audio. Honestly, the music part is the one part I am more reluctant to share, just because for some reason, I think people are going to think it's shitty, which normally would be okay, but then I worry I wouldn't know how to make it not as shitty. But making the music is also very fun to do in the grand scale of the to-do list, so I'm generally really happy about being able to do that. I also retouched some old art. Look at the difference from the art from when I first started making the game almost eight months ago. At the time, I was still more of a graphic designer. I didn't, I haven't drawn for a really long time at the time. When I was younger, I really loved drawing and I wanted to be an illustrator at first, but I went into graphic design for the commercial, more commercial aspect of it because going into an art school is already risky enough. So, um, yeah, but once COVID happened, it, my priorities changed a lot. So, yeah, now I, I have a side job. Well, it's kind of funny because I have a job, but and this game thing is supposed to be a side hustle, but I'm working a lot of hours a week. And it doesn't feel too much like a chore just because it's really fun, but obviously it's good to to uh, have an appropriate amount of sleep, yeah. So I'm still working on that. But anyway, that's a little bit of a tangent. I don't think we should tweak everything to perfection, and I'm not exactly a perfectionist either. But this one scene of this pot just doesn't work for me now. It had to go. Moving on, some people have asked me why I don't use Unity. In school, we had to learn Unity. It's the industry standard. Even if Dorian Pink flopped, which hopefully won't happen because I will literally email everyone I know and pressure them to play it. With Unity, I will at least maybe get a job with my skill in Unity. 
Firstly, to get it out of the way, I didn't like Unity at first glance, and even after using it for a bit, I didn't really like it. With Godot, I just naturally felt, I don't know, happier about using and learning it, I guess, from the get-go. And Python is my favorite programming language. I like the Godot interface more than Unity's, and I am always supportive of high-quality freeware. I think the community behind Godot has been great so far, and there's awesome tutorials and plugins such as Emilio's Style Logic. I just want to make a good game and have the made with Godot in the credits or the opening. That would be really satisfying because I've benefited so much from this community. Just one cool thing that I did was I spent way too long customizing my Reddit avatar. It is kind of it's kind of fun. Next thing I'm going to discuss is I am thinking of completely redoing or redesigning the inventory. It's not clicking with me right now. The first thing I want to change is the overall design. These panels, well, I don't know, it's kind of weird looking for me at least. Secondly, these little icons of the items, I'm debating whether I should make them pixelated or illustrated 2D. Just to illustrate my dilemma, here's an example. An NPC gives you a mysterious box of something. The pixel look definitely makes it pop out more to grab your attention. In another instance, when the 2D with the 2D illustrated style, it definitely does not pop out as much. It's a hassle to change it, but it's not that annoying of a hassle to change up the inventory. I'm probably going to go with the pixel look for the item icons, but let me know which one you prefer in the comment section below before I get started working on that. I'd love to know what you think, human with a brain that is not mine. I've been working on more character sprites and the dialogue as well. I would say I'm about 50% of the development phase, with a lot of visual assets done, like the sprite sheets and environment design. Most core framework is done too, like the dialogue system. However, in the second arc of the game, which takes place in the Devil's Lair, there's a lot more branching, as the choices you made in the beginning starts to show its effects, and branch into different endings, so I'm expecting a lot more work in the game to pop up within the next few months. Anyway, in the process of refining the dialogue script, a new character, or NPC, came to life. This is Killer Clown. He wears his mummy's sequin shift dress because he doesn't have money for a professional clown costume. Let's also talk about the logo for Dorian Pink. When I presented Dorian Pink for my senior thesis, I don't know, three months ago, I had quickly put together a logo that looks like this. I felt it was lackluster for some time, but never really spent more time on it, among other things to do on the list that I have to tend to. But it's time to give the game a proper face. There were other versions, but ultimately we went with this, and I will post eliminated versions in the Dorian Ping Discord. Yes, I want to talk about Discord today. I have been neglecting Discord, to say the least, because there's not many people currently in the Dorian Ping Discord channel. At first, it was just my friends, and it felt weird to like spam them about my game when they know so much about it already. But, 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 I want to stop neglecting Discord no matter how many people are in it. Oh, hey, maybe I should make an account for my dog and he can join me as admin. Anyway, I will definitely start interacting with people in Discord more by posting some work in progress that I don't put on social media, new new things I learned about games, music, art, and stuff, and some game dev dilemmas, and even some snippets of music, I think. If you're working on something cool yourself, please share it there too. I want to see what cool things people have been up to. I know. People are bombarded with social media links every day and marketing, and I am contributing to that bombardment, I guess. It can't be helped. But thank you to you guys who hopped into my Radio Silent Discord. I hope to make it a fun place soon, in fact, right after this video gets posted. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, and as usual, I will have a list of links I found useful 
in the description below. Today it will be more about adaptive music. If you like this devlog, let me know with a little thumbs up, thumbs down thing and subscribe plus notification bell if you feel like it. I will share more fun stuff in the next video. Also, I'm excited about a bunch of games that I have been waiting for that are coming out soon, if not already. Do share any games you're waiting for because I have been binge playing a lot of games too recently. Okay, bye. I guess it would be kind of mean to have this video be titled something related to adaptive music or audio if I don't put in snippets of some of my own music, at least. So while I am reluctant, I will just share a little bit in this video. And this one is one of the pieces that probably won't actually be in the game because I feel like it doesn't really match the vibe of the game or I can't imagine a place where this would exist in the game. Think of it if you have any thoughts about it. Yeah. Bye.